before I couldn't even say the word abortion like out loud it's hard to say the word abortion I, I always you know say it in a very soft small voice like abortion <laughs> What's it generally like to be an abortion rights advocate in the Philippines? Can you paint a picture for us a bit? What it was like even pre-COVID-19? It's not It's not actually really uncommon for the Philippines to have challenges around uh, advocating for abortion. Like, And it's not unique to the Philippines. So um, every safe abortion rights activist can actually relate to our challenges that we are facing because of the, you know, uh, stigma around abortion, the hush-hush, you know, culture around abortion, etc. And uh, we also are trying to destigmatize abortion because, uh, like in so many other contexts, this uh, stigma around abortion is permitted in so many levels and so many ways as well. And uh, towards that is ultimately we are trying. What we are trying to do is the decriminalization of abortion. If you are in the Philippines, you go, uh, you you check the internet. There are services, you know. And uh, there are misoprostol and mifepristone actually being advertised in the in, uh, in, on the internet around uh, around that um, medical abortion pills. But then again, you don't know if the, the, those are legit. The whole criminalization of abortion putting are putting women in a more dangerous situation. So that's why if we are into this business of saving lives, saving women's lives, we really have to first and foremost decriminalize abortion. It would be so great to hear a little bit more of what what your observations are now now that we're in this sort of COVID-19 moment. This, of course, is, I imagine, having many ripple effects on women and girls' health and well-being. What are, like, for, for you, what are the three things that worry you most about the impact of this lockdown? For one, uh, we've seen over and over that this government is panicking. Uh, there's no clear plan on how to, you know, ensure that everyone's rights is protected. And we've noticed that since the lockdown, there is really, you know, a spike of requests uh, for abortion services. And uh, what is very daunting is that um, just last week as well, there is a case of Catherine Bolato, a 26-year-old woman who was uh, unjustly refused for emergency care by six hospitals in Manila. I'm afraid that there are more Catherine. When you shared Catherine's story with me, Bing, I was honestly just, it's heartbreaking, you know? It's heartbreaking to imagine the fear that she and her husband must have been feeling trying to go to those six hospitals seeking care seeking life-saving care after delivering at home and after, as you said, having a complication. And what what really struck me um, as concerning or as worrisome in the context, again, where abortion is completely criminalized, is this was Catherine's experience and she was seeking care post-delivery, you know? So that's like she's seeking maternal care for, maternal care is not stigmatized in the Philippines, I'm assuming, right? You know, like that's something that, like that's considered important and valued and recognized. If Catherine's experience is, as you're described, something where she was turned away and she, she died, right? She died because she wasn't able to receive the care that she needs. What is that? It, it's just really hard to think about what that means, you know, in terms of the, the ripple effects for SRHR. And, and it clearly in, illustrates how, how easy it is within the context of COVID-19 to marginalize things that are already marginalized and stigmatized. It's just really frustrating that uh, we know for a fact that our work has been um, stigmatized and have, have, have a lot of uh, barriers before COVID, but COVID has been, you know, has been used to justify uh, the neglect. Is there anything that gives you hope about where where we might go with this in our journey as advocates for SRHR? Well, we're not hopeless. <laughs> yeah, um, we are just yeah, we're just. Confined it's good that we're not our, hopeless. <laughs> yeah, we're just confined in our homes, and uh, but the the work did not stop. You are seeing that that sense of feminist solidarity is very, very strong in spite of the physical distance. Solidarity that we are in actually 
makes me hopeful that we come out of this crisis with a renewed resolve, that we challenge the norm, we should be go not going back to normal. It's not impossible that there is something good to come out of this crisis. Thank you so, so much for your, for your time and sharing these reflections and for just speaking to what's going on right now in Manila. Um, I, we really, really appreciate it and we're really thankful for all the work that you, that you do. Thank you, Lara. Thank you. 